Hey everybody, this is Mike over at Video Prowess. Just uh, wanted to record a quick video here for you. I'm going to go through here kind of what my workflow is for a multi-camera interview. Um, and I feel like this has worked out pretty well for me uh, with most of my projects. And you know, it may be something that you find uh, works well for you too. If not, and uh, you've got a, a better work or a workflow you like better, then you know, feel free to just skip this video. But with this particular interview, there's three different angles. Two ISO, an ISO of each interview subject, and then a, a wide shot. Obviously, just you're going to want to sync up all the cameras. Okay, so here we are back again on the timeline. I've uh, gotten all three clips with all the three different angles on the timeline with their audio uh, included. And basically, I've just got here the them all synced up to essentially to this one clapboard point. As you can see, if I turn off the visibility, you can see all three layers basically are all synced up on this one layer here. So. Uh, at this point, I, I haven't laid down the whole interview. I'm just doing this for purpose of illustration. If you have a producer uh, or someone who's going to be reviewing the uh, the audio clips and picking sound, this is a good point before you actually start doing any uh, editing. Go ahead and export out a copy uh, with time code for them. New adjustment layer. Drop that in. And go ahead and have it on its own layer, and then just under your effects tab, just look for time code, and then just drop that on. Within this particular sequence, you've got uh, again, I don't have all the clips here, but what you would have is a full interview with time code and three different angles. At this point, you could go ahead and just export out uh, with the time code, and then you can send that file for, to your producer for. Uh, for them to help you pick sound. When you're in this sequence, in this part of the process, um, what what you also want to go ahead and do at this point is go ahead and tweak your audio, um, would be my suggestion, uh, for your main audio linked file in a, uh, whatever program you want to tweak it in, Adobe Audition, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I use Audition. You could go ahead and color correct if you'd like to. Um, basically what you want, the way you want to think about this is this sequence here essentially for the most part always stays the same because what we're going to do shortly is actually nest this all into a completely different sequence where we can start cutting and moving things around and this sequence will always keep the time code in the specific order that it is right now even though we're moving around uh, so if you're if the producer does come back to you and says, oh, I want you to, you know, uh, I want you to change that from this time code to that time code, you haven't started moving clips all over your sequence. So this kind of gives you some ability to always have this locked sequence here that's never going to essentially change unless you come in here and start changing the angles within this cut, which is something that you will probably do later. Uh, let's just go ahead and nest the sequence so we can see what we're talking about here. So, I select all these and just under clip, uh, create this sequence here. Now, <clears throat> one thing that you'll notice, uh, and I'm not even sure why Premiere does this, but when you create a nested sequence with multiple audio tracks, it only nests the video for some reason when you do it that way. I'm not really sure. If someone knows why, feel free to weigh in and, and, and let me know why that is. But up here in the actual bin where the, the nested sequence was created, if you come up here at this point and actually click New Sequence from Clip, from your nested clip here. So now you've just got two tracks to work with. You've got your 
your video here with all the layers as well as your audio all nested down to a very very simplified sequence like that which is you know that's kind of how I like to work especially when you're into the editorial flow um, if you're doing something like color correction you know I don't mind being in a sequence that's several layers deep but uh, your time code is going to always stay linked to that that original sequence you can start moving the clips around seeing you know what what sound bites work best in what order you know cutting out what you do and don't need your, your time code is always linked there so no matter how much you move the clips you know in, in this sequence if you start moving the clips around you know it's going to start changing your time code for where you're where you've moved the clips um, and if the producer wants to reference back to that original time code things can get really it can be a lot more work than it needs to be if you need to cut off the time code you know just because you want it off you know you can do that there within here as I said before for stuff like color correction that's the other great thing you know if you're in here you know you start cutting things up in here and you know suddenly you've got several different clips so and you forgot you know or you didn't color correct at that point unless you started to cut this up for some reason you can come in here and apply your color correction to this whole clip or whatever effect it is you're applying to this whole clip and then that will carry through to here no matter how many cuts you've made it will carry through to the whole clip here you know so that's again I mean a lot of times in editing you lose time because of things that you didn't really think through before you you started working on the project usually the way that I that I do this is as I said I go through and I create a complete basic rough editorial lock so I have at that point I've come through I've cut out all the the answers that we don't want from the interview and we're just left with essentially the answers that we want as well as the the order that we want for those answers to come in to build the piece if you have elements if you have b-roll and other cover you can come in and you've got these layers with a fairly simplified sequence to start doing that if you've got your editorial locked down, then you can come in here and you can actually start choosing which angle you want to show and for how long. So, you know, maybe you want to start this particular edit with a two shot. The two shots up for a few seconds and then you want to cut to his ISO and then briefly to the other ISO and then perhaps back to the two shot so your, your audio stays in sync you know um, and again this carries through to this nested sequence so it, it really is just a very clean effective way to edit it, it it really does help keep things organized even if the producer comes back and says I don't like the sound where it is can we change the sound can we move the order of things you can still come back in here to your nested sequence turn on the your adjustment layer with the time code and even though you've moved these around if she still has that original time code it's gonna be pretty easy to you know scroll scroll through your clips even though they're out of order from that original linear layout that was there and find that time code and readjust the clips. I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is this is the workflow that I use on a pretty regular basis and it, it's worked well for me. Um, if you have any tips or suggestions, that's uh, great. I'd love to hear it. If the video helped you out at all, please uh, like the video on YouTube. Go over and check out the website, videoprowess.com and uh, become a member. Thanks for watching.